Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim we are discussing the case a scenario of a patient uh, with endometriosis uh, a 38 years old para 4 plus 2 presented with progressive dysmenorrhea deep dyspareunia dyskasia and HMB for the last 3 years continuous lower abdominal pain for the last 1 month she has, she was dysmenorrheal for the last 1 week before and persisted one week thereafter she needs to take painkiller on a regular basis and she has got abdominal pain as well dull aching continuous with no radiation started a week before but at this time not relieved even three weeks after periods she was advised ocps oral contraceptive pills which relieved her symptoms of dyskasia but not dysmenorrhea Cycle is 8 by 28 dracular with a heavy flow but no postmenopausal and intermenstrual bleeding. Laparoscopy was done 3 years back for the right simple ovarian cyst and she is hypothyroid and is on tablet thyroxine. Her recovery was delayed from general anesthesia. On general physical examination, we couldn't find any abnormality. No abnormality was detected except for enlarged thyroid. Per abdomen showed no abnormality detected. PV showed vulva vagina healthy, uterus 12 week fixed, mild irregularity on the left side, small nodularity present, bilateral anoxia clear and tender on the left side. Okay, so we made differential diagnosis of endometriosis, PID, adenomyosis, and others. Differential diagnosis also included postoperative adherence, old ectopic gestations, pelvic congestion syndrome, and irritable bowel syndrome. Investigations. Baseline investigations are normal. Ultrasound shows small fibrite of 3 into 4 into 5 cm uterus, bulky and right serpingitis. MRI shows the left ovarian endometrioma and rectal involvement. C125 shows the level of 51 international unit per ml. TH and BSO was planned but the patient was unfit for anesthesia so patient was put on GnRH analogs like injection Zolarax 3.6 mg once a month for 3 months. Now coming to the definition of endometriosis. Endometriosis means the presence of endometrial tissue, both glands and stroma outside the uterus. The prevalence of endometriosis is 8 to 10 percent in women of reproductive years. Prevalence rate at the laparoscopy with the pelvic pain is 24.5%. Prevalence rate at the laparoscopy with infertility is 19.6%. Okay, these are some figures showing endometriosis. What is the pathophysiology? Pathophysiology includes basically three theories. Simpson's retrograde menstruation theory. Second is silomic metaplasia theory. And third is lymphatic and hematogenous spread. Okay, so these are the sites where there is possibility of endometriosis. Clinical presentation include pain, which is classical. Uh, there is a classical triad of dysmenorrhea, dyspareunia, and deep-seated pelvic pain. And pain commences before onset of menses and continues throughout the menstrual period. Also has a cyclical nature. Infertility is also a very important feature of endometriosis. It is uh, in case of the advanced disease of endometriosis, we have adherence and fixity, fixicity, which results in structural damage to the tubes and ovaries and impair the tube or ovarian mobility. Ovarian problems may also be there, which cause the anovulation, uh, luteinized and rupture follicle oocytes, maturation defects, and tubal problems like altered tubal motility and ovum pickup. Peritoneal factors include the intraperitoneal inflammation and the sperm problems may, uh, may also be there because the phagocytosis by macrophages and inactivation of antibodies. These sort of the problems are there. Now, what are the other symptoms? Other symptoms include extra pelvic endometriosis, 
like cyclical rectal bleeding or hematuria, scar endometriosis, cyclical pain and bleeding at the scar, umbilical endometriosis, pleasant as umbilical mass with cyclical pain, and pulmonary endometriosis can also be there, which causes the cyclical hemoptysis and hemothorax. Okay, so what investigations will we do for a patient with endometriosis? First of all, transvaginal ultrasound scan, retroverted uterus with uh, the patient which uh, we studied, uh, she had retroverted uterus with obliteration of the curly sac and bilateral adnexal masses may be suggestive of endometriosis. That thing helped to differentiate endometrial cysts from other complex cysts like dermoid and endometrial cyst, low level of internal echoes with posterior acoustic enhancement, ground glass appearance. C125 levels was increased in moderate is increased in moderate to severe endometriosis and non-specific for diagnosis of endometriosis. The laparoscopy is a gold standard and during laparoscopy, the entire pelvis should be examined systematically in a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. The aim is detection and biopsy of the lesion, staging of the disease and concomitant laparoscopic surgical treatment. What investigations will we do? CT and MRI identified pictures in as in the ultrasound, color Doppler flow, increased vascularity, cystoscopy uh, shows the involvement of the bladder and sigmoidoscopy is also done if the woman develops bowel symptoms. Now how will we classify the endometriosis? In stage 1 is the minimal uh, type of the disease with score 1 to 5. There are small spots of endometriosis seen at laparoscopy but no clinical symptoms are there. Stage 2 mild with score of 6 to 10, scattered flush, fresh superficial lesions, no scanning or retractions or adnexal adherence. In stage 3, which is a moderate disease having score 16 to 40, contain endometriomas of less than 2 cm in size, and there are minimal peritubal and periovarian adherence. Stage 4 is severe disease with a score of more than 40, endometrioma exceeds 2 cm. Dense peritubal and periovarian adhesion restrict mobility. We have thickened neutrosacral ligaments and involvement of the bowel and the bladder. And now come to the management. Treatment aims are to improve fertility, enhance the chances of assisted reproductive technology, pain relief as an alternative to surgery while awaiting surgery and as an adjunct to the surgery, prophylaxis against the disease recurrence for the symptoms recurrence. Medical treatment of the pain reliefs first line include NSAID, OCPs, progesterone, medroxyprogesterone, acetate, in which come in the form of norethesterone 5 to 10 mg daily, and um, uh, didrogesterone 10 to 30 mg daily. Medical treatment for the pain relief, second line, gonadotropin releasing hormone, GNRH administered continually to down drug release and suppress majority gonadotropin. It causes atrophy of the endometriotic tissue and prolonged GNRH therapy over six months causes hypoestrogenism and menopausal symptoms such as hot flushes, dry vagina, and urethral syndrome and osteoporosis and should be used with ad bag HRT routinely. Levonorgestrel intrauterine system. Okay, uh, emerging medical treatments, orally active GnRH antagonist, relo, uh, golix, selective progesterone receptor modulator, uh, ulipristol, mifepristone, aromatase inhibitors, complementary therapies includes acupuncture and TANS. Surgical treatment for the pain reliefs, nice suggest XCN rather than ablation of the endometriosis for deep endometriosis involving the bladder or um, bowel bladder or ureter. Consider pelvic MRI before operative laparoscopy and three months course of GnRH uh, before surgery. Consider hormonal treatment after laparoscopic exceen, total hysterectomy and bilateral ophorectomy for the woman with severe symptoms and those with a fertility is not a problem. If hysterectomy is indicated, excise all the visible endometriotic lesion at the time of the surgery. Premenopausal women may need HRT after radical surgery. HRT following bilateral ovarian removal in a young woman may be prescribed under strict monitoring as a risk for recurrence remains. Treatment for women with endometriosis related infertility medical treatment. Nice do not recommend hormonal treatment to the woman with endometriosis who want to conceive. Assisted reproduction in mild to moderate endometriosis with a normal tube. IUI plus ovarian stimulation with gonadotrophin. 
for moderate to severe endometriosis with a block tube IVF surgery. Laparoscopic surgery for the deep endometriosis is usually second line treatment after failed IVF unless IVF is not feasible or patient has severe symptoms. Stage 1 or 2 endometriosis, laparoscopic surgical scene of endometriosis plus adhesiolysis not involving bladder or ureter. Laparoscopic scene of endometrioma greater than 4 cm in diameter. Now coming to adjoint therapy, GNRH uh, agonist for 3 to 6 months prior to IVF dramatically improves IVF outcome and emerging therapy, lipiodol, hysterosalpingo, gram uterine bathing and tubal flushing have most promising innovative fertility treatment. Okay, thank you so much. That was uh, just brief description of a case which we studied about endometriosis.